In the previous video, we deployed our HCX connector, and now we're going to move on to the next step to configure the HCX service mesh. Hi, my name is Raj Jetnani with Google Cloud, and in this video, we're going to pick up where we left off, where we set up the HCX connector on-prem to pair with the HCX manager on the cloud side, and now we're going to go to the interconnect view and set up our network profile, compute profile, and service mesh. The network profile tells HCX which networks to land its fleet appliances which effectively perform all the migration functions, including vMotion, the network extension, the WAN optimization, etc. Let's go ahead and create this network profile on a distributed port group. And since this is a lab environment, we're going to put all the traffic types on one network port group. But in your production-like environment, make sure to verify the configuration requirements with the HCX user guide and also make sure that your MTU is set to whatever your connection to Google Cloud is, whether that's through the partner interconnect or your VPC, having the minimum being met either at 1440 or 1500. Once again, we're going to select the traffic types here, management, HX uplink, receiver replication, vMotion, all on a single port group. But keep in mind, this is a simplified environment and you'll want to configure the environment per your environment variables and network port group configurations. Next, we're going to go check out the cloud side. And you can see here on the cloud side that we already have a network profile for different traffic types. Pay special attention to the uplink network profile MTU in order to make sure that you don't have fragmentation for the migration traffic. Now that we're done with the network profile, let's head back on-prem and create a compute profile, which is another prerequisite before we can start migrations. And the compute profile describes what the underlying cluster or infrastructure looks like for HCX to deploy its fleet appliances, and also selects what the cluster is and how it's configured for the VMs that we want to migrate from and to. So let's go ahead and hit continue here. We're going to select the majority of the options for the services we want to activate, select the cluster that we want to leverage for the workloads, and then select which cluster or resource we want to use for the HCX fleet appliances to leverage, whether that's the storage, putting in a specific folder, etc. And now we're going to select the network profiles. So the network profiles, again, tells the HCX fleet appliances how to talk to your management network, how to talk to vMotion, and how to talk to Google Cloud. In our case, in a simplified environment, we're all going to have the same network profile. But in a production-like environment, you're likely going to have multiple network profiles for the different traffic types. Next, we're going to select which distributed switch that we want to leverage for actions such as network extensions or stretching the L2 network if you want to be able to be motion with zero downtime. And then it's going to generate a list of firewall rules that you can pass on to your firewall team so that they can open up the necessary connections. Now that we have the compute profile finished, and again, this is already created for you on the GCV side automatically, we're going to combine the compute profile on-prem with the compute profile on the cloud side by creating a service mesh. So we're going to select the on-prem compute profile, the GCVE compute profile, and go through this next step. Again, here you'll see the different options enabled. If you're missing an option, make sure to check both sides of your compute profile that make sure that's uh, selected. And then on this screen, this is an optional screen where you can select to override something outside of your compute profile for things like which network to use for the uplink or migration traffic. We're also going to select how many network extension appliances we're going to deploy as well as other advanced options around WAN optimization and WAN compression. Finally, we're going to hit continue, give the service mesh a name, and once that's complete, it'll automatically deploy all the necessary HCX fleet appliances on both sides of the environment. So you only have to do this once, starting with the on-prem, and it'll actually orchestrate the deployment of the necessary appliances, both in the on-prem environment and in the GCV environment. You'll also notice that it may try to add a standalone host to your environment, which is the mobility agent. This is how vMotion gets connected for isolated networks. Once your service mesh is created, make sure to run a diagnostic check 
and if everything's good in terms of firewall rules and connections, you'll see that it'll come up with all probes were successful. This now shows us that we have a healthy service mesh and we're ready to migrate our workloads and virtual machines. As mentioned before, if you go to the GCB side, you'll see that the service mesh is already created there as well. Congratulations, we have everything in place now to start moving our virtual machines to the cloud. Check out the next video for the actual virtual machine migrating over an L2 extended network with vMotion with zero downtime. To learn more about Google Cloud VMware Engine, visit our site at cloud.google.com slash VMware engine.